pests can ruin a grow. But with the right IPM strategies, you can keep your plants healthy and thriving. Let's dive into three key areas you need to focus on. But check this out first. Let's give a big shout out to this video sponsor, Lost Coast Plant Therapy. It's what I spray in my grow and get the good minty smell. <laughs> hey, if you're looking for an all natural way to protect your plants from pest and mildew without using poison, check out lostcoastplanttherapy.com. They offer a safe way to keep pests and pathogens off of your high value plants. So if that matters to you, which it should, find out more at lostcoastplanttherapy.com. Coupon code DUDE will save you 20%. Again, lostcoastplanttherapy.com. Coupon code DUDE for that dank 20% off. All right, let's get back to the grow show. All right, let's do this. The first thing, main point one, cultural practices. Get your notepads out, guys. It sounds a little too snazzy. What's cultural practices? Oh, first off, IPM. I just want to say what IPM is just in case. Integrated pest management and just the idea it's integrated and you're managing. You're not praying for pests not to come. You're assuming that they're going to come. You have integrated a management strategy. And so the first one of those things, cultural practices, keeping it clean man. not uh, walking from your outdoor greenhouse, which I have that might be totally loaded with bugs or after I just mowed the lawn and uh, walking into my grow or even worse. Here's whoa. <laughs> there was some scissor trimmers right there, <laughs> man. Spring loaded. <laughs> yes, I've used them so much. I've broken the lock on them. But if I'm out there trimming something, you know, tr trimming something in the landscape or in my greenhouse, I do not want to be bringing those things in. And if I do, I'm soaking them in alcohol first. See, sanitization, not for you, your tools. Being it for you can be hard. You want to move quick, man. When you're getting stuff done, you have a to-do list for the day, and then you want to tend to the grow, and you're like, damn it, I'm supposed to go take, you know, change my clothes, take a shower. So plan that timing. For me, if you can plan to tend to your grow before you've done anything else outside or after you've taken your morning, afternoon, or evening shower, that's a great time. Yeah, shower, yeah. And I also, I leave my watering can. I have a specific one, and I leave it inside to grow so nobody gets confused and takes that and puts whatever the hell and goes and waters the lawn or leaves it in the greenhouse. I have specific scissor and uh, specific uh, tools for my grow. Keep in mind when you think, oh, it may be not a big deal if I bring in one or two pests. Pests in nature have natural predators that keep them in check. One or two things in your grow, even one spider mite that breeds like crazy, we'll get into it, is a problem. Um, next thing, inspecting clones, genetics. Of course, heavily inspect those clones from a buddy before you bring them in. It's the best time at that small size. Be really careful. You might not want to bring clones in too often unless it's from a super trusted source. That Unless you're Scotty. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't do it too much anymore. About a couple of harvests ago, I lost my whole harvest of powdery mildew. And that's one of those things you can scope all you like. You're not going to see every little powdery mildew spore that is uh, laying dormant. Yeah, there's no excuse anymore. Look, Grambo showed this. You can have a handheld freaking microscope, man, that goes up to a hundred times right to your phone. A thousand Super times. easy or a loop. Yeah, I got them. Can I tell you something? Uh, they're like 80 bucks, oh, 30 bucks. Jeez, you can't afford not to buy one, Rambo. <laughs> it's on sale. But seriously, these things, um, okay, make fun of me, dude. I bought a hundred pack of these on Alibaba. <laughs> 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 I lose them everywhere. Uh, and I lose them everywhere because they have no value now. But these are like five bucks, has a little light on it. And uh, this mm. is great for being in the grow and just grabbing a leaf and going like that in the grow. Uh, you can see almost everything you need to with one of these. 100%, Scott, that loop, Scotty's loop is has an LED light on it, which is very handy, and it has a 60 and 30 times lens also, which is very handy. So get both of them if you can, because when you find anything at this stage, it's easy to treat, way easier than when you have a full plant, and you're going to miss complete coverage. Uh, so yep. really scope hard on bringing anything new. And you can even see, which we'll get into uh, some other stuff, how do mildew before the naked eye can fully see it under those microscopes and loops if you really know what you're looking for? Yes. Unfortunately, yes. I do. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. Uh, environment. Yeah, uh, that's a big yeah, one. Wouldn't, wouldn't, okay, go ahead, take it. Well, just people sleep on the environment thinking that uh, the IPM is all about spraying or whatever. Dude, it's about keeping uh, conditions not favorable for bugs to uh, populate. Man, the, the difference between a spider mite at like 70 degrees 
how many babies they can make. And the difference at 80 and 85 degrees is tremendous. Grambo, mm-hmm. it's exponential. Yeah, but for real, man. So if you've got, that's why we talk about keeping your temperatures down uh, for things like powdery mildew, your humid- humidity has to be in check. Yeah, there's bugs love hot and dry. You know, you get spider mites, man, leave, leave your conditions hot and dry. You got no predators. I was reading, they can, they can lay like, uh, reach maturity in five days and lay a hundred eggs in a week. And I always had the analogy of like, man, if you're at spring break and, you know, partying on the beach and all of a sudden it gets cool, <laughs> cool and cloudy and you know, maybe it rains a little. Stuff's going to disperse. Not as much breeding is going to be happening. So, um, uh, if you have spring break, <laughs> <laughs> if you have, I wasn't a, I wasn't a spring breaker. That's probably why I talk shit. But if you have the means to lower your temperature in your grill while you have a problem that you're spraying for, that will definitely slow. Especially if you're in a vegetative stage where you can just, hey, I'm going to slow down the grill for a minute, take care of this problem, then get everything chugging along again. If your grill is usually at eighty, bring it down to seventy five or seventy, even if you can't. Yeah, well, I am from Fort Lauderdale, home of spring break. All right, so if I'm going down to the beach, I'm keeping myself clean, man. I'm getting it together. And that is my terrible analogy for keeping your room clean, all right? Make sure that you don't have, when you trim the plants, make sure you don't leave debris on the floor. Sweep that up every time. And guess what, dude? I have a separate broom for just inside my grow. You want to talk about a dumb thing, Go and grab a broom that you just swept the garage with or outside with and bring it into your grow to sweep your grow up. Yeah. I have a long hose for my vacuum. So I leave my vacuum 20 feet away from my grow when I'm vacuuming out my grow. All this stuff oh, yeah? is available. Yeah. And these are all cultural practices, I'll say. I have my own vacuum for the grow. Just kidding. I just wanted to try and one up you. Uh, ah, yeah. No. Even- <laughs> these are things I think of, man. All right. When I'm smoking and hanging out there, I'm like, I'm not bringing that into the grow. I know where that's been. My favorite quote of where, where do spider mites or their eggs come from? Because eggs can overwinter in this debris and crap. And a grower buddy said they come from the deepest, darkest cracks of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Come on. Uh, all right. One come more on. thing. Stay. The sprain, safe sprain. Uh, sprain is probably the number one way people try to handle any type of pest pressure on their grow. So let's talk about it, man. And avoid chemical stuff. Don't go to the little aisle in Home Depot and pick something out to spray or grow with. Yeah, this, I'm going to start there as like a public disclaimer. It sounds so great when you look on the internet and somebody says, you got uh, powdery mildew? Just go buy this stuff, Eagle 20, and you spray it all once and you're good. Or was an avid or floramite for mites? Those things are meant for ornamental crops. They're meant so when you go buy flowers at the grocery store and they look beautiful and they don't have any bugs on them, they are absolutely not meant and they have been tested and they are uh, carcinogenic or just straight up poisons when you smoke them. And yep. Eagle 20 is the most clearest example. It is when you smoke it or when it's vaporized or combusted it turns into cyanide i think it's hydrogen cyanide Mm. but the last word is cyanide (laughs) (laughs) right i love it yeah go with the horticultural oil um lost coast plant therapy is a great product for anything crawly any mites thrips aphids anything you're dealing with and it's just an oil base with pepper oil little citric acid completely natural won't harm your plants completely safe uh, so check out, shout out to Lost Coast Plant Therapy dot com. Coupon code dude over there. Dude will hook you up with 20 percent off and great people that support the community. Honestly. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm looking at these and any type of a horticultural oil, any type of one of these uh, sprays that uh, are not going to be systemic. When I say that, stay inside the plant and continue to to make poison from inside the plant. Uh, you've got to. These are going to kill on contact. They won't kill eggs. So this is what you got to know. What kind of bug am I dealing with? And then, man, we've got, uh, you know, Google and chat. Just ask, what is the life cycle of this bug with the temperature and humidity that I have? You're going to be able to find you got to every time those eggs hatch and there's young nymphs. That's the technical word, Grandpa, right? (laughs) There's young uh, uh, bugs that can't lay eggs yet. Immature bugs. You've got to kill them. It won't kill the egg. So that's why some uh, spray intervals are really important, man. Some products that do claim to kill eggs, even if they do, there's no way you're going to get complete coverage. So make sure I always had an interval that would take care of almost all pests that targeted cannabis of once every three days. Three days. For at yeah. least probably 
five applications and then go to once every 10 days. And if it's time to thin out the cam- canopy at all, thin out the canopy. So make sure you can try and get as complete coverage as possible. Hey, we didn't even say anything just on unclosing beneficial predators. We could do a whole extra video on that, but there is a whole world of bugs that you introduce instead of them being plant eater bugs, they are meat eating bugs. So they go around and they eat other bugs. That is uh, really cool stuff. And it's something that we should explore in another video, dude. Uh, let us know how you guys handle your IPM and your grow down below in the comments. What type of products you use, what type of protocols you have. Hey, and if you do like this video or you did like this video, please hit the like button and please smash that subscribe button and go ahead and talk about this video with another grower, you know, and check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommended.